animals do not grow smarter and wiser. Animals that are born with lack of vision die out in the visual field. So nature kills 10,000 animals for each one it produces. I better do that with the worm. If you can spread this idea into all areas, worms are born. I don't know what I've got this. This is a drawing of a worm. The worm has light cells all over its body. They're very weak. They're eyes, but the early stages of the eye. So when this worm sticks its front end out of the ground and a bird sees it, it picks it off. But if it's born with more light cells up here, just a few more than this, and a bird's shadow comes, it retracts. Gotcha. And then eventually all the worms that survive have light cells over here. The eye is an organization of light cells. It starts out with light cells all over. But the bird worms that survive are the worms with the light cell at the leading edge. If they're at the trailing edge, it doesn't survive. When a bird lands with a worm and the other birds open their mouth, I did this years ago, I, the bird that moves the most with the mouth open gets all the worms. Gotcha. It doesn't feed all the birds. Feeds the most active. So I made a plastic bird with the mouth wide open on a spring that moved more and the bird put all the worms in there. That's why, that's when I became a mechanist. I believe that human beings cannot think or reason. They're mechanisms that respond to the environment because they have a wide range of responding senses. So I look at robots the same way, but we're organic. We get hungry, so we hunt. Robots don't. Robots don't say, I need lubrication, so I'm going to behave a certain way. They don't care whether you lubricate them or not. Mm -hmm. So they don't evolve. No man has been able to make a robot that's just, just a minute. I feel good doing that. Robots don't feel good or bad. I don't know if you notice it. When a wolf has incisors, logic, he can tear off bigger pieces of meat. If he swallows it faster, he can survive starvation. So animals do not chew their food. They rip off the meat and swallow it whole, just as it is. I don't know if you notice that. That animal will survive in scarcity. The animal that tears the meat off and chews on it won't be of enough food. So the animals tear it apart fast. And they don't outgrow that. The animals born with the larger fangs survive. Those with shorter fangs don't get a bigger piece of the meat. Animal life has no purpose, what I'm trying to say. There's no purpose to eyes, ears, teeth, or anything. If you're born with things that work under those conditions, you survive. If you're born, say, with a, let's say, a more rational mind, and you're rational about everything, you can't live. You might leave a little food for your young. If a bird doesn't feed its young, let's say it just eats the food, that species is gone. A bird that doesn't take care of its young. Birds are not born to take care of their young. They say they instinctively take care of their young. The birds that don't feed their long are dead, young are dead. They're gone. But if you start looking for purpose in life, everything seems to have a purpose. So you're looking at the successful birds that still exist. Under those conditions. Yes, under those conditions that yeah. feed their young, that's why they're there. It's not, yes, yes. It's not, uh, Same with humans. You feed their own young because they're not helpless. Chinese used to drown babies that were females. Did you know that? Because they can't feed them. Eskimo would put his grandma out on the ice when there's a shortage of seals. And she never wanted to be put out on that. So she always behaved very well. So it took an Eskimo who had a wonderful grandmother a little longer to put him out on the ice. It's very hard to accept that humans are machines. They're responding organisms. Very difficult. And people that used to attend my seminars for years would write songs about a responding organism. 
a bundle of tropisms. You know, and they couldn't get along with normal people. You must understand that. that. Since I've been attending your sessions, I'm losing my friends. I said, you're not losing your friends. You're losing people that are hard-headed, hard-wired. But you'll have to change people to get along with them. I call it poisoning the well. I'm saying that all things are shoved by something else. There's nothing, although we can't see the wire up our ass connected to the sun, we depend on the sun, the radiant energy of the sun. You may not see the forces that move you, nutrition, different food combinations, strengthen your fingernails, lack of it makes them soft and they crack. You don't know how your body operates, but if you study nutrition and physical degeneration, you know more about the body. You never know everything. The word everything is a stupid word. It implies that there is such a thing as everything. When you get into the mechanistic point of view, all that the mechanist says is that all things are shoved by other things. There's no prime source of that movement. In other words, if this begins to roll, it means the table is not level. Right. Nothing moves of itself. Plants do not grow. They depend on sunlight, water, moisture, soil, temperature, many different things. Mm -hmm. So there's no prime mover. Well, say, how did the universe begin? That's a stupid question. It assumes a beginning. A seed, they say, is, is the beginning of a plant. How do you know it's not the end product? Why do you call it the beginning? Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Man projects like hell, including scientists. There's no good, no bad, no smart people, no dumb people. There are people that have less tools than you do. Right. You might have better tools hmm. if a girl falls in love with a taller guy than you because she likes tall people and you get mad at her. You don't understand the effects of the environment. When you understand, you'll never dislike anybody or hate them. You'll understand where they're coming from. And that will stop a lot of crime and a lot of... That's what I mean by we're not educated. I hope you know what I mean now. We don't... We're not given that. Well, I never heard of Fresco. He has no PhD. He never graduated junior grade school. Therefore, fuck Fresco. You're a follower of some fucking fraudulent guy. That's what they'll tell you if you talk to normal people. But if you understand what I'm saying, you'll only understand those things that have parallel, that you have experience with. I can't talk to anybody. They would, uh, they would hate me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if I talk to scientists, they'd say, "Well, where the hell do you get your ideas from?" You know, I got mine by hard work. So did I get it. I worked very hard, questioning everything, trying to. I still have a few carryovers, which I said, okay with me. Primordial slime. What? The primordial slime. Yeah, it's right? part of the slime, exactly. <laughs> and that goes for all of us. We can never be objective. Do you know why? We can never be open-minded. Because all of us have some of the slime. Yeah. There are some of us that can accept a wider range of behavior due to background. If you don't have this background, if you've never been here, you'll retain what you've been given. But from now on, you're poisoned. You can't go back yeah. to the old way of thinking. You'll never be able to go back. There are no roads to yesterday. You know what I mean by that? You can't go backward and say, well, i become an atheist, now I'm going to become a Catholic again, unless you see things differently. Believe in miracles and you believe in people with power of telekinesis. If you don't know how they do that, you might go back to church. Were you once Christian? Yes. I was one a believer in God, let's say that. Okay. I believe in somebody that made the world, because that's what they told me. What made you change your mind? 
a motion picture called uh, <coughs> The Ten Commandments. You ever hear of it? Yeah. By Cecil B. DeMille? I saw it. It was the old one, the original. And I came home and I said to my older brother, I don't understand the Egyptians. Didn't they believe in the same God we believe in? He said, no, maybe they were atheists. My brother was a little older. And I said, what's an atheist? Well, atheists believe that animals evolved. The giraffes ate things from, and made a long neck, and, and animals went through evolution. He knew a little bit about evolution. And from my background, at that time, that made more sense. I had enough of my friends, and I said, gee, maybe there isn't a God. And I began to talk to people, and they said, you're nuts, there's got to be a God. <laughs> and then I, I read books on atheism a little bit, and it made more sense than God making a man and a woman out of clay, earth, and he turned them loose in the Garden of Eden. That sounded more like a fairy tale. I had enough of a background to make it. If I didn't, I would have rejected it. When the minister said it rains to make the plants grow, I said, why does it rain at sea? I really wanted to know. I was not an atheist. So he said, hold on your hands and beat me. And I, I began to doubt the wisdom of that guy. Then he said, God works in strange ways. After we die, we'll know why certain things happen. Today you won't understand it. So I bought the package, and then I said, why does a flood drown children? They've had no experience. And he said, because the Lord works in strange ways. We may not know that, but there's a reason for everything. And then they gave me some reasons. He did. He says, a man he met went blind due to cataracts. And the blind man said, since I was blind, I realize a lot of things that I didn't appreciate in the past. So I says, the purpose of that guy going blind was to give him the realization of how wonderful it is to have sight and then how wonderful it is to have senses. Right. So there's a reason for everything. And that stalled my ability to think things out. You know, it was a good example. Yeah, it is. And, and then so going on, I didn't find blind men any particularly smarter than anyone else. Mm -hmm. This particular blind man that he quoted, yes, he did. But there are many people that have a negative experience and makes them more negative. Right. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's very hard to be objective. And I found that conflict in the early stages of beginning to question things. I found, well, it's better that I go to church once a month, you know, not give it up entirely. <laughs> so I said, well, God would know I was false then, then I didn't have to go once a month. Because mm -hmm. I said, I can't put it over on God. So I got, then I learned more about evolution and learned more about God sacrificing his son. And if he knows everything, he would know that his son would be crucified. Then it didn't make sense. I began to question that whole pattern. Mm -hmm. It went in circles, you know what I mean? And I pulled out. But if I didn't question the patterns, I don't think I could make it. And if I wasn't shoved further enough along, I wouldn't have questioned anything. So here you're being shoved, and from now on you'll question more things.